Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to read a new book, but before we read our new book, I want you to think about something. Who has ever been to a farm? Can you raise your hand if you've ever been to a farm? Okay, if you've never been to a farm, um, have you seen pictures of a farm? Okay, great. So let's think about some things that you would normally see on a farm. So what would you normally see on a farm? That's right. On a farm, there's, a lot, there's animals, um, cows and chickens and horses. Um, there are also things that grow on the farm, like apples or corn or tomatoes. And there's also tractors and plows on a farm. Great job. So today, we're going to read a story about a farmer named Harvey Potter. And Harvey Potter has a very unique farm. I'm going to show you the cover. And I want you to tell me what you think Harvey Potter grows on his farm. That's right. I think from our title, Harvey Potter's Balloon Farm, that Harvey will grow balloons on his farm. All right, let's see. Harvey Potter was a strange fellow indeed. He was a farmer, but he didn't farm like my daddy. He farmed a genuine U.S. government-inspected balloon farm. No one knew exactly how he did it. Some folks say that it wasn't real, that it was magic, but I know what I saw, and those were real, actual balloons growing out of the plain old ground. What do you think Harvey Potter's balloons will look like? Do you think they'll be colorful? Do you think they'll be in certain shapes or maybe creatures? All right, let's read to find out. Harvey Potter had some of the prettiest colors you'd ever want to see on a balloon pleasing purple, orange ray sun, yellow and yellow. There was rip two shot red and jelly bean black, blooming blue and grassy green. He had all kinds of shapes too, round balloons, long ones, animal shapes, clowns with big noses and mouths. He even grew monster balloons with scary faces and great big sharp teeth in time for Halloween. I tell you, Harvey Potter was a strange fellow, all right. To look at him, he was quite plain, never wore nothing to draw attention to himself. His hair was kept close cropped to his head. Overalls with a shirt underneath were his uniform. There was nothing special about his face either. What wasn't so plain about him was the conjure stick he carried with him wherever he went. Sometimes he used it to scratch his back, but mostly he just carried it under his arm. It was Weasel Mayfield who called the government on him. So the government came to Harvey Potter's balloon farm bright and early one morning. Our whole town turned out for them. And though nobody said what they thought, we all held our breath, hoping we could keep our balloons. Why do you think Weasel Mayfield would call the government on Harvey Potter's balloon farm? Do you think that Weasel might have been jealous of the attention that Harvey was getting at his balloon farm? Or do you think it was because maybe Weasel um, wasn't selling as much of his, um, off of his farm as Harvey was on his? We never, we never knew how to grow anything but trees, maple, sycamore, pine, oak, and regular kinds of stuff like corn and okra and tomatoes. But Harvey Potter grew balloons and no one knew what he used for seed either. Anyway, the government men were standing around in white coats and white hats and white gloves. They kept us so far back we could hardly see, but I climbed right up in the sycamore tree and saw everything. They pulled and they poked and finally they pricked one of those plants with a pin. And what was supposed to happen did, the balloon popped. Even they couldn't argue with that. So they gave Harvey Potter the right to grow balloons. He never asked them for it, mind you, but he took it anyway, just to be polite. Let me tell you, it made everybody happy. Well, almost everybody. Weasel was sore. Now I had quite an interest in Harvey Potter's balloon farm, and I decided I was going to get to know him. He didn't seem to mind. In fact, he let me get to know him right good. I'd bring him lemonade or sit on his porch and swing in a swing, but he never would confide in me about how he grew those balloons. I didn't pry. After a while, I just liked going around him. 
He didn't ask you any questions about why you weren't this or that. He just let a person be. He let a person sit and think out loud sometimes, and well, that's a mighty good thing to do. Still, something in me was a hankering to know. So I decided I was just going to go out there in the nighttime. That was when he did his field work. I told you he was strange. To this day, I am indebted to that sycamore tree and to, the, to that big old moon. It was as full as it was wide that night. I saw him the second he opened his door, plain as day. He stood there on his front porch, hands inside his pockets, looking straight ahead where the fields were. That conjure stick was under his arm. He just stood there, eyes staring straight ahead at something off yonder ways. Then he came down off that porch. Step, step, step. His steps all seemed so big and loud. It must have been his heavy field shoes. He walked down to the field and without a sign of warning, commenced to holler. The next thing I knew, he started dancing and prancing with that stick held out in front of him like it was dan his dancing partner. Then that stick started to glow a nice orangey color and stood up directly on its own. And when it rose up into the air, Harvey Potter rose up right along with it. The two of them were making some mighty fine footwork, six feet or so off the ground. They were a floatin' and a bobbin', why it appeared as if the two of them had turned into glowing balloons themselves. Although it was a very strange sight, which got even stranger. Harvey Potter dropped back down to earth grabbed hold of that stick and waved it over his head. He whooped and he hollered and he yelled as he carried on so. I am not ashamed to say I was mighty scared. I would have jumped right down and run for home, but my eyes were just plain glued to Harvey Potter. Then Harvey let go of that stick and it started to bounce and float over the field, dropping down here and there in nice neat rows. And all the while, Harvey Potter just kept a whooping and a screeching. All of a sudden, that stick came to a complete halt and flew right back into his hand. What do you think will happen next? That's when Harvey Potter stopped screeching. He turned around and looked directly up at that sycamore tree. I thought for sure he saw me, but I guess not, because he turned back on around and went in, into his house and didn't come out again. I climbed down and fell off to sleep, waiting. In the morning when I woke up, wet with dew and shivering cold, little bitty colored mounds were popping up all over the ground. When I ran back after supper time, they had all come up in the glory of that day's sun. I tell you, it was a sight. Harry Potter saw me out there in his fields, admiring his latest crop of balloons. He said I could take as many as I wanted. I took three, a clown, and an elephant, and I couldn't resist the jelly bean black one. I didn't touch the monster ones on account of they were too plain scary. Oh, those were the times Harvey Potter went right on going the best, prettiest balloons this side of anywhere. And we never heard a word from the government men either again either. As for Weasel Mayfield, he was so riled up over the fun we were having with our balloons, he packed up and moved off to unknown parts. I remember those days well. It was the summer of 59 when I was hankering to leave home myself to find out what the world had to offer. Harvey Potter grew me a balloon that was big enough to carry me off. That's how I landed in this place here. I never did go back home and never did want to. This here place was just right for me. These days I farm, and I am not one to brag, but I have harvested my 32nd crop of balloons. Now I don't grow mine the exact same way as Harvey Potter does, on account of I am not Harvey Potter. I have my own methods. Maybe I'll show you someday. So now I want you to think about one unique thing that you could grow in your own farm. So take a minute and think about one unique thing that you could grow in your farm and then we'll share. 